So here you will have conduction. Do we have convection? In detail, yes, we do. We do have convection in z direction. Okay? Because in detail, cold fluid come down here and start rising up. That means temperature here and there may not be exactly the same. And there will be flow as well. So in detail, there will be both convection and conduction in z direction. But temperature difference here and there may not be significant. We can drop the conduction term easily. Then the convection term, if we assume that velocity due to the rise in difference of the density may not be significant, we may just neglect it. Okay? As long as you neglect convection, you have conduction only in y direction, the profile will be linear. Oh, do we have convection in y direction? No. The fluid does not move in y direction. So there will be no convection in y direction. All right? Now, if I want to do shear balance for energy transport, what does my shear look like? Once again, you need to look for temperature difference. There will be temperature difference in y direction. So therefore, shell in y size is supposed to be delta y. OK? There will be no temperature difference in z direction. So shell in z size can be the full length. OK? So my shell here should look something like this. This is shear balance. So input term would be flux at y multiplied by if the wall has width w and length l. If the length here is l and the width is w, this will be our flux, input flux. The output should be similar. Is there any force? Is there any external force? Do we have gravity? Yes. Does gravity do anything with energy transport? No. Because right now, energy transport is in y direction. But gravity goes down in z direction. It's different direction. So we will not consider gravity force here. Do we have additional form of work? No energy production, right? So here you have everything equal to zero. So if you divide everything by WL delta Y, take limit delta Y approaching zero you end up with differential equation like this.
Okay? So, for combined flux in y direction, you can write equation like this. For sure, there's conduction in y direction replacing by the Fourier law. This is QY. Can we drop the second term? Yes, because VY here is zero, right? In our system, you have VX, VY, VZ. VX will be definitely dropped. VY is zero. We have VC only. And VC here is function of Y, right? So VX here is dropped. VZ, oops, it's not zero. VY is dropped. Okay? Tau Y Z can be, I mean, you can use Newton law to describe tau y z. Right? And we v, y here is zero. V c is function of y, so you need to keep this term. So at the end, You have two terms. Now, if you plug this EY into shell balance, you should get this equation equal to constant, right? So that means, I mean, if you start from shell balance and you integrate it, this should give you EY equal to constant C1. Bring C1 equal to this equation again. If you integrate it, it should be hard, right? It's hard. Why? Because right now, both T and Vz are function of Y. And if you set it up equal to constant, how can you integrate it? Because right now, Vz is also a function of T. So, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. It's even harder. So what should we do? besides giving up. As I said, you know, up to this point, everything is 100% absolutely right, correct. As long as you can go through it, you get absolutely 100% correct answer. However, due to our limitation, you have mathematical limitation. You cannot go further. So we need to start dropping additional term so that we can at least get some answer. Even though that answer is not 100% correct, but at least you get something, okay? You can do that as long as your assumption makes sense. Doesn't mean that you can do anything, right? in your, your examination paper, you need to state your assumption clearly, okay? So, I will drop one more term. Which term should I drop? This term, right? I'm going to drop this one, neglect it. Why? Not because it's difficult, but by physical meanings, this equation means that 
energy flux is constant. Energy flux in y direction is constant. And it is constant equal to two terms. One term is conductive flux. This is conduction. The other term here is called, you, you can call this one viscous heat, right? So this is some sort of viscous heat. And I told you that as long as you do not have extremely high velocity or extremely high viscosity, viscous heat is normally dropped, okay? So we will neglect this term because this one is essentially viscous heat. Then you can plug this conduction term back to that equation of shear balance. So if I plug it back there, I will get minus K second order differentiation of T by dy squared equal to zero. <coughs> okay? Minus K can be dropped because the right hand side is zero. You take one e integration, you have dt by dy equal to c1. Take another integration, you have c1 t c1y plus c2. And you can see now, this is linear temperature profile, okay? And if you look back, this term, the viscous heat, can also be thought of as a convective term, right? I told you from very beginning that we are going to drop or neglect convection, any convection, so that we will have conduction only. And conduction only should give you linear a temperature profile. So at the end, according to our assumption, you should end up with linear temperature profile. Okay? So boundary condition that we are going to use would be at y equal to what? Minus b. Because right now, the zero origin point is right in the center. On the left-hand side wall, coordinate will be y equal to minus b. Tem uh, temperature here is equal to T2. So you will have T2 equal to C2 minus b plus C, I'm sorry, C1 minus, minus b plus C2. Another boundary at y equal to b, temperature is T1. 